Hey friends, today Baby Floof and I are taking the testing tracker app to the next level by giving it a modern form makeover. Instead of just cramming everything into one overwhelming screen, we're going to break it down into clean, logical tabs so testers and admins can actually find what they need without the chaos. I'll show you how to set up tabs for testing details, tracking details, notes, PDFs, approval tracking, all within modern tabs. Then we'll walk through how we can see who's completed their testing or not, how admins can restart testing for everyone with just one click, and how to organize everything in a way that's both easy to use and scalable. If you've ever struggled with cluttered Power Apps forms and wanted to give your users a smoother experience, this is the video you don't want to miss. Let's dive in. We are in our main gallery. We have some color coding going on here just to give a visual indication of which tests are complete and which ones aren't. Red means nobody has started their work yet. Green means it's complete, and purple means it's partially complete. This is to give your admins of the testing process a good, just quick visual. We also have these amazing flyout filters, courtesy of uh, Victor Tulu. I'll put a link to his filtering video in the description below. And we'll be covering how I set this up in a future video. But today, we're going to cover how we did modern tabs with the galleries and modern forms, and how we can restart testing as well as tracking when it has been restarted. So if we look at this tab here, tracking details. Tracking details is exactly what it sounds like. It's tracking who has completed their testing. But we also wanted to be able to track who had already completed their work if we restart testing. So you can see here we have some fails, we have some positives because this is dummy data. This is not customer facing data. But when we restart testing, we wanted to be able to track who had completed their work, if it had passed or failed. Because restarting testing can be done at any stage, we wanted to see how many iterations it had gone through. So let's go into the back end here. And starting at the top, we have a container, a horizontal container, with a back arrow. And if we expand this out, we're setting var this item to blank. That's my vernacular for the item that we selected from the gallery. You can use whatever terminology you like there. We're navigating back to the main screen. We're resetting the form, and then we're refreshing our data sets. Because the data sets for this are SharePoint and we're making changes to it, we want to make sure to get the latest and greatest of all of these. Then we have a label to let end users know what they're doing. Now as we move down the screen, let me scroll down over here, we have a horizontal container with a vertical container within. Now our tab list, if I click on this and expand it out, you'll see we have some logic. This is one of the nice things about modern tabs is we can conditionally show or hide things. So if PDFs have been generated, and I've done videos on that in the previous, so I'll link those down below. If there are PDFs that have been generated, give us the tab that says PDFs. If not, don't show that tab. There's no purpose to show end users an empty tab. It'll just confuse them. If we go out, and we come into a different one of these records. You see here, no tab, just a cleaner interface. Okay, so back into one of these. And as we move down, we have a horizontal container. Let's click on that. Now within here, we have a few things going on. We have a button for restart, which I'll get into in a minute. We have a spacer. I wanted to have the save button and the refresh at the far right and leveraging a horizontal container and just a blank text box with the flexible width turned on. I can have the button at the left and the restart tracking at the left and then the save and refresh at the right. And then this will fill the space for me. Work smarter, not harder. Now we have a label here for errors. So if someone makes a change and they haven't saved it, let's say we come in here and we do settings, we're giving them a, a prompt saying, hey, you have unsafe changes. Again, making sure that users can't claim that they didn't realize what was going on. I can refresh and it'll take it back to how it was. And you'll see here how when I hit refresh, I'm going back to my SharePoint list and my library because this is a SharePoint library giving me the screenshots that were attached to this testing. So at one point in the testing, a user attached this screenshot. And if I click on the eye here, because it's a SharePoint library and I've done videos on this, it'll pull it up and allow me to work with this image right in SharePoint. So much easier than doing list items where you have to download and then re-upload, just a better user experience. 
as we move down, we have two different things here, and this is changeable and this one isn't. They wanted to be able to possibly change who the assigned testers were, so this is a multi-select people picker, and then done testers. This is a way of capturing who has completed their testing, and we covered that in a previous video. So if we look at tracking details, every time someone marks one of these as passed or failed, we're writing that information to a SharePoint list. And if we go back and look at that, here we have the title of the testing tracking stage, what the master ID of the master record is, who did the work, and then approvers. Because once this is done, we go into an approval stage. We'll get into that in a future video. We also wanted the ability to filter by users who has completed their testing. And in this case, I'm the only one that's tested, so I'm the only one that shows there and pass or fail. So if I want to see just the pass, I could. If I reset, I could see just the fail. And then in a previous video, we covered how we could create a PDF of this. They wanted to have records. So we can create a PDF of this, and if we wanted to, save it out to a SharePoint library for trackability and historicals. Here we have a notes section. You can append notes to a multi-line text field. And you see here how we're also capturing if restart of testing was marked. So the use case for that was if a user reports a test has failed, the help desk is notified. They can go into the software, make changes if they have to, and when they have updated their settings in the software, they would come into here and click restart testing, and that would notify all the users that their bug that they reported has been fixed and they need to test again. If we move on, here we have the PDF. So that PDF that I showed you that we could save, this is where we can see all of those PDFs, and because they're housed in a library, SharePoint library, I can click on them and see them right within my SharePoint experience. Back to the Power App. Here we have approval tracking. We're going to cover this in a future video. So let's go back to the main screen, and let's look at how we're showing and hiding all of this when I select all the tabs. If I move down here, Within our vertical container, we have the bottom container. And within this vertical container, we have the tabs at the top. And then I have multiple container containers. And if we go up here to insert and type in container, we have a freeform container, a horizontal container, and a vertical container. We've covered all those before. These are container containers because I wanted to be able to within the container, control how things are laid out. So for container details, and you'll notice everything here is labeled, always rename things as you go for the main containers so that your coworkers don't hate you when they come in to have to make updates. If we look at the visible for this, tab list one selected value equals testing details. If that's true, it's visible. Now you'll notice I don't have if true or false then show or hide. You don't have to do that. This is so much easier. It's cleaner code. Now container tracking details, same thing if we click on the visible. If the tabs list one selected value is tracking details, show this. If not, don't show it. Same thing for container PDF. If PDFs is selected, approval PDFs if it's selected. Now you'll see here, and I love how they have the icons here, container notes. This one is a little different. It's not a container container, it's a vertical container because I wanted this to lay out very specifically. I wanted my buttons at the top and then all of my fields down below. Okay, back to here. Let me know in the comments if you want me to get into any of the details in more depth on future videos. Let's look at restart testing, the button here. What happens if I select that button, I'm going to hit the Alt key on my keyboard and hit Restart Testing. I have a modal here. I never want things to happen or don't happen. That's a little ugly. I'll play it. I never want actions to happen without giving the user some sort of feedback because I found that users will say, oh, I didn't mean to click that. It was an accident. I shouldn't have restarted testing. This way you have validation that they clicked a button Yes, they realize they want to restart testing and they can add any comments. If we were to come in here and say, please restart and hit yes, restart, we capture the comments. You see here how we're telling them, do you want to restart testing on this step submitted by me 
and the time and date stamp. Let's mark this as a restart, and then I'll show you the whole process. So I'm going to hit the Yes Restart button. We get a notification testing successfully restarted. Because we have the refresh going on, you see here how now this is showing as red. If we go back to the main screen, I covered this in a previous video, here I have another task. That same one is waiting for me, so I'm going to say it was severity high. And I did this in a previous video, make sure you go back and watch that if you want to get caught up. And remember, if you're a member of either my Kofi or a YouTube channel, you can download all the working files and play with this on your own for as long as you like. So if we come back in, now it's back to purple. And if we go to our notes section and we scroll down, we can see here timestamps a couple minutes ago and now who is completed. I've restarted the testing. I, Stephanie Marshall, marked it as restarting. And Stephanie Marshall, I know it's confusing, but as a tester, I had already marked this as passed, but I'm capturing in the notes that I, Stephanie Marshall, restarted with some notes. And you see here how, please restart testing, please restart. If we go in here and we hit restart testing and we enter no notes, and now it's red. If we go in here and look at the notes, scroll down, no comments entered. It's a kind of a useful thing to be able to capture if they entered notes or not, just for, again, accountability. So if we come back out, let's go back to the screen, let's go into it, let's mark it as complete again. I'm going to do medium, tested yes, it's passed, I hit submit. We get the spinner, we get a notification, we go into the back end. That icon there, the gear is only available to admins. Happen to be an admin, so I see it. Now let's look at this screen and the restart testing button functionality. So if we scroll down here to testing details, I have a vertical container. And again, this one isn't really labeled because we have so many containers going on, but we have a horizontal container. Within there, we have the restart button. We have that text space that we talked about. As we move down the screen, we have a, another horizontal container. And within that, we have two vertical containers. And the horizontal container on the left side has the container holding the form. Not a modern form, but it doesn't have to be. You can mix and match modern with non-modern. The reason that I don't have a modern form in here is for that notification that there are unsafe changes. I've done videos on that. You can go look at it. So here we have the form. And then on the right, we have a gallery that is looking at our SharePoint library and filtering it by the master ID of this item. So if you have any questions on that, let me know in the comments. Now let's look at the code for the restart testing button. On select of this button, what happens? We're setting a variable to true, and we're setting a variable called var restart. If I scroll up here on the tree, at the very top of the screen, we have a container container called restart testing. Now within that container, well, let's look at there first. I have some color shading going on. It's 255.255.8. I don't like having it full white because that can confuse users. <sighs> users are so confusing. And then within that container, I have a vertical container. And this one, I do have a drop shadow on and a full white. And within there, I have a label. Do you want to restart testing on the title of this item? We have another label of who is submitting this, the user that's in the app, and the now, the timestamp. We have comments, and then I have a horizontal container with my two buttons. Now, if we look at the logic on the restart testing button. So first, we have to set a variable called var done testers. We're restarting testing. So we want to capture who has completed their work. So we're looking at who is already marked as a done tester, um, and we're setting that to this user, and that's where we capture that information for the comments. Remember, in the notes section, it said so-and-so had already done their work. We're capturing their display name and their email. Your organization may have three John Smiths, but it'll only have one John.Smith or one John2.Smith. This way, having the display name and the email, you have accountability. Then we're setting var this item, the gallery item that we select is var this item. So we're setting that and we're patching. And we're patching to our checklist var this item because we've set it. What are we doing here? We're patching to the notes. So in our SharePoint list, we have a column called notes right here. We have a column called done testers. 
and we are capturing the notes, and then we're setting done testers to var this item dot blank person. I'll get into that in a minute. So for notes, we're taking the notes that were there before, and we're adding to that. We're doing a timestamp, a dash, in bold, and that's what strong means, the user's full name, they restarted testing that had been completed by var done testers, the variable we set up above, a break, which means a hard return, and if there were comments, if there, if the comments section is blank, if the, nobody put any comments in there, star, 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 no comments entered, otherwise we're capturing the comments, and then we're doing a break because we want to have those returns, and then in our SharePoint list, Done testers is a multi-select people picker. At the time of this recording, you cannot set a people picker to blank. You physically have to override it with something. So if we look at our SharePoint data, and we go into SharePoint testing checklist, edit data, and I'm going to go into list settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, I have a people picker called blank person. This column is not shown anywhere in the app and it's always going to be blank. So I'm able to overwrite whatever is in done testers with this blank column from this variable, this item. Now, as we go down, we're resetting the text box. So we wanna reset the comments if there were any. If there are any errors, we let them know. Otherwise, we give them the message that testing was successfully over restarted. We send them to the admin screen and we're setting the var this item to blank. And if they hit cancel, what happens there? We set the pop-up to false, we hide the pop-up, and we reset the comments. That's really important because otherwise, if they entered comments and then they said, oh, not right, they hit cancel, when they come back in, those comments will still be there. So if I hit cancel here, let's look at the notes, and this is what it did. So it took what was here before and added all of this text to it, the now with the dash, who did it in bold, restarted testing that had been completed by me, and that no comments were entered. That's how we can treat the restart testing. Now, if we had this all on one screen, people would have to scroll and scroll. It's just confusing and busy. So breaking it out with modern tabs using these amazing tools that Microsoft has given us gives us such a better user experience. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.